I'd like to open it up um, for any questions to our panellists, if anyone had a question. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, Kia ora. Um, there's a question for you, Jim Sage, and um, really enjoyed that, um, that presentation and the, um, the, the commentary on a lot of the opportunities that are in the, you know, in the Randerson Report, um, and uh, in particular the, the Strategic Planning Act and the role that landscape might play in that. But um, my question really goes to um, your thoughts on whether those opportunities um, might we just have the rug pulled up, out from under them by the, by the new definition of environment which focuses on just the physical environment um, and takes out all those subjective uh, aspects which go to what landscape is actually and, and, and maybe that's more important than even the amenity values. Well I think that is where some focused uh, submissions on the exposure draft are quite critical because I think the Labor government has indicated that it is taking the Radisson review as having done the bulk of the work and translating that now into um, a draft bill. And I think you're exactly right, Gavin. Um, and and there's, there's a real risk there, yes, agree. It's great to hear your speech, Jamie. With the RMA, one thing we've at last achieved, and it's taken a long time, but at last we're doing marine management, we've got marine landscapes, we're now not just stuck with looking after the, the forests and the land and the urban forests, but we're now dealing with the, the kelp forests beneath, the diesel and the architects, we're doing that, uh, we've started to do that. But do you think under the new statute there'll be, does it look like we're going to have a chance to be managing our and stopping the trawling and breathing of our marine environments as we've begun to do now? Really good question, Di. Thank you. I was conscious of the time and I was getting over time so I didn't really talk about sea space. We hear in Taronga Moana and the Motiti decision um, highlights, I think, the frustration that many in the community and Mana Whenua have felt about the slowness to get new marine protected areas. We need reform of our marine reserves legislation because it hasn't got a treaty basis to it and it is too focused around um, protection and establishment of marine reserves for scientific purposes when we need them for a broader range of purposes. On land we've got a third of Aotearoa in the conservation estate but only 0.4% of our sea space uh, is protected, despite having the um, fourth largest exclusive economic zone in the world and our sea space being 15 times our land area. So, um, and the regional spatial plans apply to the coastal marine area. So I think seascapes and the work that landscape architects have done with that whole stream of aquaculture cases, particularly in areas like uh, Banks Peninsula and the Marlborough Sounds to look at natural character of uh, the coast and define that. I think now, earlier today I was at the um, University of Waikato who are really growing their marine um, uh, teaching and capability and uh, with remote sensing, um, so an opportunity to map uh, seascapes, seabed, and look at what are the seascapes that are significant for biodiversity purposes, for cultural purposes, as Mahana Kai, uh, and include those in the regional um, spatial plans, because of course it's effects on land, sediment, uh, uh, subdivision, uh, ends up in the Awa, goes into the Moana. So you've got to get that integrated land sea management. Uh, so seascapes are quite critical, 
and we are still too terra centric.